Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is the second part of the Elizabeth and Joseph Ritzel's case. The last part got totally tanked by YouTube because I used some strong language. So if you're interested in this story and if you're interested in watching this video, uh, the first one should be watched. I will link it in the description of this video. So we are at a point where the investigators are turning their attention towards Joseph. They realize that Elizabeth was the victim in this situation, the survivor in this situation, and that Joseph is the one that committed the crimes, the gruesome crimes of their case. In the beginning, he didn't even want to talk. He said that he was sorry and that he wants to be left alone. But eventually, with the pressure of the detectives, he admitted to building the dungeon and imprisoning Elizabeth and her children for 24 years. He was very scarce on details, but he admitted to it but making it look as if no force was involved. He also admitted to threatening Elizabeth and her children with poison gas if they tried to escape. And somehow in his sick mind he still thought that what he did was good for Elizabeth, that this way he saved her from bad company and drugs. Joseph said that she was locked up because she was a difficult child, and let me tell you something, I know a lot of difficult children, but you don't imprison them for 24 years. But investigators probed him even further, uh, questioning his relationship with Elizabeth and having seven children, he was unfazed, as if it was something completely normal. He admitted having sex with her, but said that it hasn't happened in months, as if that was going to make anything different. Late Saturday night, as Joseph was interrogated, Chief Inspector Leopold Atz arrived at the Frisell home to pick up Felix and Stefan to bring them to their mother and to provide them some medical attention. Now, information about this part of the story is quite contradicting. If you remember from the last video, I said that Elizabeth and her children, her downstairs, her downstairs children, were brought up by Josef to their house and later that day they saw uh, Rosemary and their brothers and sisters. But in some publications it is said that the children from downstairs, uh, Felix and Stefan, uh, saw any other humans but Elizabeth and Josef right then and there for the first time. The, the detectives were the first people that they saw so I don't know what actually happened, but I do believe that they were brought up earlier in the house. And I do believe that they met Rosemary before the detectives came. Anyways, in the grand scheme of it all, that fact is not that important. But the detectives said that the children were very pale, that they were very easily scared. They were well-mannered. When they reached the hospital, they were reunited with Elizabeth, who arrived at the hospital right after the interrogation was done. And in the hospital, doctors were trying to ascertain their situation and their medical state. And at this point, they were trying to decide what the best course of treatment would be for the children. And they were trying to decide the best way in which they could marry the downstairs and upstairs children. As you can probably imagine, the shock for all the children is enormous because some of the children have spent their lives imprisoned and some of the children have spent seemingly normal lives. The situation was very tricky and even to this day, even years later, the situation in their family reportedly is very tricky because of it. Elizabeth lost all of her teeth, her gums were totally black because of gum disease, her bones were brittle because of vitamin deficiencies. She also walked with a limp and was constantly hunched over. And even her speech was affected by the imprisonment. Just like their mother, Stefan and Felix had complex medical problems. Their immune systems were compromised and not formed properly. Their skin was paper pale and they had serious vitamin D deficiencies. Stefan, who was 18 at the time, had a pronounced limp just as his mother uh, and he had a lot of spatial awareness problems because the cellar was low ceiling and it had so little space. He was also found to be suffering from a serious motor neuron problems, which made walking even more difficult. Like his sister Kirsten and Elizabeth, uh, he lost all of his teeth. Little Felix was the least unhealthy one and he was expected to make a full recovery and if I'm not mistaken, he made a full recovery. When Rosemary Fritzl first learned about what 
her husband had done, uh, she reportedly suffered a mental breakdown and was hospitalized with a heart problem. Due to that, she was investigated much later than anybody in this case, a couple of months later. Now, I'm still 50-50 about Rosemary in this situation, knowing that nobody in that family had access to the cellar for 24 years and not even once being kind, I don't know, uh, curious about what's going on down there and not questioning anything to her husband that just that is that is from my perspective unbelievable i don't know should anybody believe in her story but i don't want to i don't want to look at her as a suspect in this case because she might also be a victim tell me what's your opinion on that because no matter how much research I do, there is no one definitive answer. I just know that her involvement or lack of it in this case is highly questionable. On Sunday, Rosemary Fritzel arrived at the Amstetten Meyer Hospital for a family reunion in a special closed off area of the hospital. Even before receiving the DNA results for the children, uh, doctors at the hospital already made a plan that the downstairs and the upstairs children should be reunited as that is the first step in their recovery. When Rosemary and Elizabeth saw each other, it is said that once again the encounter between them was emotional. When Rosemary saw Lisa, Monica and Alexander for the first time in her life, once again uh, she broke into tears. And here is the moment where it where it kind of doesn't seem that they had the encounter in the Fritzl house when Josef brought them upstairs. A special fund was set for the Fritzl family because Josef was almost three million dollars in debt at this point and the recovery of the family which included uh, serious medical and psychological attention and education was going to be expensive and last up to eight years. If I'm not mistaken they still receive regular therapy and still are working on the issues that they were left with. The initial expectation for the cost of everything was up to 1.5 million dollars, but I do believe that everything that they went through cost much more. Austrian government gives them somewhere around 50,000 euros every single month. Many Austrian newspapers, uh, celebrities and radio stations set up accounts for donations for the family and many celebrities even themselves donated to the family. There were more than 30 detectives and 300 police officers working on the case, working around the clock and trying to piece together what actually happened. Four men teams of forensics were searching through the house and the cellar, but the cellar was so badly ventilated and damp that they could work only up to an hour at the time, leading to the speculation that Elizabeth and her children spent most of their lives laying down or sitting. On May the 1st, the nurse that was by Josef even before anything in this case happened, and if you remember I talked about that in the first video on this case, she said that she recognized him through his eyes. I'm inclined to believe in that, even though all these years have passed by, she continued with her life and she never saw him again. If you look at his eyes, they are very distinctive and there is something monstrous about them. She even said that as soon as his picture popped up on her television, she recognized him instantly and lost sleep for days. She described in vivid detail how Josef crawled into her bedroom through a window while her husband was out working. She was woken up with him inside holding a kitchen knife to her throat threatening to kill her if she screamed. In the publications she was called Frau M and she told the newspapers that Josef was at the time a well-known peeping Tom who used to bicycle around the streets at night spying on women. With everything blowing up, the entire world heard about this case. It was huge at its time and a lot of information was given to the public. This is one of those cases that transcended borders uh, just like the Watts family case, like Jack the Reaper, you get what I'm saying. Everyone in the world was patiently waiting and hoping for Josef to be locked up for the rest of his life. The public's opinion was that Michael's death was a homicide. Now listen to this. Because of the public pressure, Josef Fritzl's lawyer, Rudolf Mayer, accused prosecutors of trying to lock up Josef Fritzl for the rest of his life. Uh, even though Austrian law gives maximum sentence, gave maximum sentence 
of 15 years at the time for homicide. Their defense was based on the fact that Elizabeth was left to give birth to her children for three days and Joseph didn't know what actually happened. He didn't know that Elizabeth had complication while giving birth and that Michael had breathing issues. His lawyer said that at the time Joseph was emotionally destroyed but somehow had no regrets about anything that happened. Mayor conveyed that his client, Joseph, viewed himself as a patriarch and a protector of the family. There are actually three special places in hell, one for Joseph, one for his lawyer, and one will be occupied later. Reportedly, there was a $1.5 million bounty for Elizabeth's picture. She was portrayed in an artist's rather gruesome impression of how she might have aged into a white-haired old woman. In some documentaries and sources, it is presented that Elizabeth actually looked like this at the time, and that's why I hate the reporters in this case. This picture is just a guess. It is a version of Elizabeth Fritzl that might have happened, but it is not actually Elizabeth Fritzl at the time. The detectives that worked on her case said that, apart from being very pale, uh, which is understandable, she looked like any other woman her age. After several attempts of photographers trying to sneak in and take a picture of Elizabeth and her children, the elite Austrian and Cobra force was brought in, equipped with thermal cameras and guard dogs. Over the next few days, 17 photographers were arrested trying to take a picture of the family, and that one special a place of hell that was unoccupied up until this point is now occupied. The survival of this family is sensational on its own. Them being left in peace is all they needed and deserved after years of torture. And I truly hate that for a long time they weren't left in peace and that reporters and photographers and anybody and everybody in this case try to sensationalize even further what actually happened to them. You don't actually need to add up anything else to sell the story. The story sold itself. It is reported that at the time Josef Ritzel asked for his wife to come and visit him in prison so he could try and explain himself, but she refused. And around this time she was questioned about the entire case, but later she was dismissed of any charges or any involvement. Christoph Herbst and I know I butchered that name, I butchered a lot of names in this case, appeared on Austrian national television to inform the world about this case and to relay some facts about it and relay how Elizabeth and the family were feeling. He praised Elizabeth for her strength and uh, he said that he couldn't believe how devoted she was to her family, despite the condition that she was in. He said that the entire family was helping each other in their own recovery. Due to huge publicity of this case, other sources came forward about Josef. Austrian newspaper revealed that Josef Fritzl was a regular guest of Villa Ostate Brothel in Linz, and there he gained a reputation of extreme per. A barman working at the villa said that many of the girls working there refused to provide him any kind of services, as he was just too weird. All the women working there told that he requested unimaginable things from them. Later continuing with the story, through his lawyer we found out some gruesome details about this case, about what he has done. He was asked about how he felt after Kirsten's and Stefan's birth. Josef said that he was delightful that he was extremely happy because he had this new proper family underground. With his new wife, Elizabeth, he actually considered her as a wife. He was asked what would have happened to the captive children and Elizabeth if something happened to him on some of his trips or uh, if he was ill or anything. Joseph still to this day claims that there was a timer set off to open the basement if something happened to him and for a prolonged period of time he wasn't able to go downstairs. But the actual investigation and the forensics in this case could never find anything of those sorts built into the basement or any of the doors in the basement. So if something actually happened to him, Elizabeth and her children would have probably died and we wouldn't even know about this. Fritzl even admitted that with every new child Elizabeth gave birth to, his control over her got bigger, because all of a sudden she wasn't worried about her own life, she was worried about the children and how they are going to be brought up. 
She basically dedicated her entire life for her children's sake in the basement. A little digression from the story, I completely understand her. My mother, surprisingly and out of the blue, got pregnant at 47. And a couple of months ago I got a sister that is 24 years younger than me. And there is this weird paternal instinct that I have that is probably because of the age difference between us. And sometimes I don't even think of my needs because of her needs, so I completely understand her. By the way, if you want to hear about that, if you want me to tell that story, how, how I got a sister out of the blue, uh, let me know in the comments, I'm willing to tell it. Going back to the story, Joseph even said that he brought Elizabeth photographs of the upstairs children and that he brought her news about the children, how they were doing in school, what kind of personalities they had and how they were behaving, were they healthy or not. This separation of children is still weird to me because uh, to the upstairs children he was very nice and like a father figure, but the downstairs children, he suppressed their personalities and it is reported that while he was downstairs they were living one life and while he was upstairs, while they were alone with Elizabeth, they were completely different. He would often come down to watch football with them. The children felt as they were under some kind of pressure, under psychological pressure, and they actually never enjoyed the time that they spent with him. He even said that Elizabeth caused him no problems. She never ever complained, even while her rotten teeth were falling out and she was in constant agony and pain. He said that even though she was in constant agony, all that she thought about is providing the children downstairs some resemblance of normal life. And he noted that he saw the children getting weaker, alluding to the fact that he was this protector of the family and that letting them go was some kind of a reward. Speaking of Kirsten's illness, which led to Dungeon's demise, he angrily said she tore the clothes from her body and threw them into the toilet. Kirsten would not be alive today if it wasn't for me. I made sure that she got to the hospital. As if he was some kind of a savior in this situation. Now at this point there was this urgent call uh, for changing the law because Josef Ritzel was completely able to adopt the upstairs children. Even though he was a convicted... Outside of court, Josef's lawyer said that he was asking himself why nobody from his family came to visit him, and he said that he misses his wife, Rosemary. Since gaining her freedom, Elizabeth surprised everybody by her sheer strength and determination to heal her family. At one press conference, Elizabeth's lawyer said she is very strong, a tower of strength, happy for the first time. Her biggest wish was to have the family together and to have the best for her children. They need the time to heal and grow together. Everything else was secondary to her. She told her family that all she longs for is a normal life. That was her only wish. Elizabeth actually was so moved by all this goodwill towards her and her family and decided to give something in return. After discussing it with the doctors, she and the doctors decided that they were able to start a group project. For the next two days in collective therapy, Elizabeth, Rosemary and all of Elizabeth's children all worked hard preparing this thank you poster that was displayed in one of Amstetten's stores. We, the whole family, would like to use this opportunity to thank you all for sympathizing with our faith. Your empathy is helping us to go through these difficult times, and it shows us that there also are good and honest people. We hope that there will be a time when we can return to a normal life. I just can't believe how even in those times when uh, all she could think about is her family, how they were going to get better, she made the time to thank everybody that was sending good wishes and help to her family. As the time went on, the upstairs children had the problem being closed off in the hospital and the downstairs children had the problem of adjusting to everything new and they needed a slow-paced recovery. And it was only the start of the entire healing process. In the meantime, Kirsten's state improved immensely and Thankfully and miraculously, she woke up from her induced coma and didn't have any kind of brain damage. A forensic search through Fritzl's paperwork showed that the true intention in Josef adopting Lisa, Monica and Alexander was monetary gain, of course. He was making somewhere around $60,000 in perfectly legal Austrian state 
subsidies. Right before Elizabeth and her mother and all of her children were about to move out of the hospital, a male nurse was caught trying to sell a cell phone photograph to some kind of magazine for $500,000. This led to the clinic banning all of the employees working on helping Elizabeth and her family from carrying any kind of phones or cameras. A letter was sent to all of the clinic staff that if anybody of them tried to abuse their position, they would be prosecuted and lose their job immediately. Sources inside the prison that Josef Fritzl stayed in said that he received more than 200 love letters from women all around the world, uh, saying something to the fact that he was just misunderstood and that they offered all the love they can offer to him. In June, the Fritzl family moved in into a spacious villa well hidden on the grounds of the clinic. And that was the starting point of their long healing process. Doctors thought that by taking them from the hospital atmosphere, they would uh, start to lead more normal lives, more regular lives. It was the family's first home outside of hospital after spending more than two months inside the hospital. In late June, Elizabeth's psychiatrist told prosecutors that she was too unwell to appear for her scheduled statement in early July. They ruled that she was too traumatized to give evidence, even from the clinic. Earlier, Elizabeth requested to give her statement as soon as possible to speed up the legal process. Although her doctors planned to be there so she would not be overwhelmed, the prospect of facing her father, who would be able to challenge her and question her evidence, was just too much for her. But on Friday, July 11th, Elizabeth was driven to a secret location to start filming her three-day-long video deposition on the case, covering every single aspect of the torturous 24 years that she was imprisoned. One doctor and one psychiatrist were with her to give her help given her statement. Rudolf Mayer, Josef Fritzl's lawyer and prosecutor, Christine Burkheiser, sat in another room watching her testimony. They were both able to question her through a microphone, and Josef Fritzl waived his right to attend this testimony, remaining in his prison cell. Less than a month after moving into the villa, Elizabeth asked her mother Rosemary to move out and to never come back, according to press reports. In the three months since they had been reunited, Elizabeth started asking her mother certain difficult questions and the tensions between them started growing. She rightfully so wanted to know why her mother was so passive during her 24-year imprisonment and why she hasn't left her father in 1967 when he was convicted of her. She was also rightfully so mad at her mother that she couldn't do anything to protect her uh, even when she was as a child. Right at this point of the story, it's not quite clear, did Rosemary know that Elizabeth was while it was going on? Did Rosemary find about it years later when Elizabeth came out of the cellar? Of course, Elizabeth asked her mother questions, even that I have, how she was not suspicious about anything about the cellar for years. Rosemary was reportedly shattered because of her eviction out of the villa with no money. In desperation, she went to Linz to live with another daughter while she had some time to get back on her feet. A few days after the eviction, Rosemary was seen shopping in Linz. She lost at least 50 pounds and was living on $600 a month in state benefits and looking for an apartment. On Saturday, July 26th, she returned to their Amstetten home to take all her stuff. Paparazzi photographed her at that point. Here is a picture. On her way out, a neighbor asked her how she was doing. She said she was just fine and drove off. But Rosemary's sister, Christina, later said that Rosemary completely lost it. Three days after that, she announced that she would divorce Josef Fritzl and that she would be reverting back to her maiden name. In another display of humanity, Elizabeth decided that she was going to surprise the detectives that were working on her case. She baked them a huge cake. Police chief Carl said that he had no idea about it until the moment that Elizabeth arrived with her children, bringing the surprise basket with a couple of bottles of wine and cake. They also had coffee and ice cream and just chatted in general about the life, about their case, about what was going to happen and the trial that is going to ensue. Elizabeth even gave a short speech to the detectives 
uh, declaring that they were normal people now, that the family felt normal and usual for the first time after the reunion. The entire family, including the eldest girl, seemed strong. Said Chief Carl, you would never guess what Elizabeth has been through. She's an extremely strong, courageous woman who does everything for her children without worrying about herself. On November 13th, Josef Ritzel was formally charged with A 27 page indictment of Josef Ritzel accused him of his baby Michael by failing to provide any kind of medical attention despite knowing the serious condition that the baby Michael was in. It also accused him of subjecting Elizabeth to several attacks, making her completely dependent on him for her and her children's survival, giving her basically no alternative but to provide services. It was estimated by the detectives that she was more than 3,000 times. Joseph surprisingly didn't want to appeal any of it. On March 16, 2009, Josef Ritzel arrived to the courthouse for the first day of his trial, hiding behind his court paperwork, which was allowed by Austrian law. On day two, the videotaped testimony of Elizabeth Fritzel began. Reporters and public were asked to leave the courtroom because uh, Elizabeth's identity was protected, so how she looked was never going to get out to the world and the extreme details of the story are not necessary for conveying the story in the news and reports. A neonatologist was also present to present the fact that Michael could have survived if the right treatment was provided to him. The following day, March 18, 2009, Josef Ritzel was asked by the judge how he felt after watching the videotape testimony of his daughter, to which he replied with just, I plead guilty. Although Fritzl pled guilty to all of the charges, the jury was still required to give their verdict. After just four hours of deliberating, the jury came back and gave a guilty verdict unanimously. Josef Fritzl was sentenced to life in prison for by neglect, 20 years for enslavement, 15 years for 10 years for deprivation of liberty, 5 years for coercion, and 1 year for and the trial for this crime that lasted 24 years was done in just three days. Josef, not surprisingly, had to change his last name while staying at the prison because the other inmates didn't quite like him. What would I give to be other inmates right now? To close the entire story right now, uh, Elizabeth Fritzel and her children were all given new identities and moved to Village X. No one knows where Village X is. You can't find it on the map and that is the way it should be. There are strong laws in Austria preventing anybody from outing their identities, uh, going to their property, and there are guards present 24 seven to protect the house that they live in. There is little to no information about them now, obviously, and that little information I could find about them is highly questionable. It is said that other people from Village X are very protective of the family. They frequent a certain restaurant in the Village X for family dinners and the owner of the place says that they are just like any other family. In 2019 there was a story of Elizabeth being in a relationship with one of her guards that is a lot younger than her, but I don't know how much of it I believe. It is even said that he moved in to live with them. They still to this day, just as I earlier said in this video, are in therapy in hope that someday they will live their lives to the fullest. That much is certain that information is correct. I wish them nothing but the best. Josef is still in prison, he has dementia, he is very secluded, oftentimes he doesn't want to leave his cell for prolonged periods of time. And I just know that we are all waiting for the time for the good news. At least I hope that we are. And that pretty much is everything in the Elizabeth and Josef Rizal's case. Tell me in the comments what do you think about it. Uh, I know that probably most of you know about it. The only thing that the public is not certain on is the Rosemary's involvement and that is something I would like to see in the comments. What's your opinion about that? I may be a slight more towards the side of Rosemary, maybe suspecting something or being involved. She could be just another victim of Josef. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. If you're still watching and haven't subscribed, what is the problem with you? I have put a lot of effort in this video and it would be nice if you could share it. This one is heavily censored because the previous video uh, I didn't censor anything, so it got tanked and YouTube didn't recommend it to anything. Again, it will be linked 
so you can watch it. If you have some specific cases you would like me to research and make videos about, leave it in the comments since nobody's in my comments. It is very possible that I'll cover uh, the case you want me to cover if you comment. And that's it, you will see me in the next video guys, bye!